How's it going guys? It's Eclipse here and today we're going to check out the Centurion Action X on World of Tanks console after the Action Hero Seasons just come out and update 6.0 and all of that malarkey. I've had a few really good games and I've also just got three marks on it uh, as you can see on screen. Um, and basically, yeah, I thought I'd let you guys know uh, exactly how the tank plays and potential ways to use it. And yeah, I found that this is very all-round. I've had loads of really good high damage gameplays due to the DPM that this tank does have. It's got good mobility. It's got a decent turret if you um, get into positions where you can uh, get hold down and also use your gun depression. It can bounce sometimes uh, and you tend to actually, because of the accuracy on this, you can really snipe people's weak spots uh, really reliably. Uh, and so basically we're going to go into the stats now. Uh, so on World of Tanks uh, console we've got 268 millimeters of penetration on its standard rounds uh, followed by 330 on its premium. You don't really need to use the premium rounds on this tank because 268 will pretty much go through any weak spot of any tank uh, from tier 8 and upwards. Um, so yeah that's absolutely absolutely fine as long as you're aiming for weak spots if you're in a bit of a clutch situation where you have to use premium rounds or you feel like it would be beneficial you can you know press a and you'll be um up to 330 millimeters of penetration the hash rounds instead of getting he uh, will be 105 millimeters of penetration so they're really good for artillery you can one shot artillery fairly reliably from tier 9 and below and tier 10 RT can you know you can high roll uh, to be able to kill them in one shot but not all the time and also you do have to mind that not all of the time pen them uh, straight away the hit points of this vehicle are 1950 and its vision range is 420 uh, which is pretty standard for uh, the tier 10 mediums that's obviously boosted up using the crew skills and stuff for me to have a view range of 478.6 meters. So I know the max is 440 meters, but uh, past that it just makes it easier to spot tanks with their camo. So it reduces the camo factor of the enemy tanks. Um, so basically you'll be able to spot people in bushes. got a really really nice gun as you can see 0.23 accuracy using all of the perks and, and buffs that I have on the tank which I'll show you now um, just as a as a guide as to what sort of perks you want on it I've got six cents obviously have that on every tank uh, then I use born leader because that's just that's just one of the best perks in the game basically means that all of your crew skills will work 10% better so you know if you've got nine crew skills uh, take out six cents and the one that you're using uh, you will have seven percent better on average uh, if they you know increase by a certain percentage so say if I've got a 10 percent increase um, it'll actually be 11 percent increase to gun reload speed etc so that's really really good same with the accuracy so you'll have 11 percent increase to accuracy instead of 10 um, because of this perk so it's 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 really good in game and um yeah i'd recommend it obviously you want the reload speed rapid loading uh situational awareness to increase the view range which means you'll get more spotting damage and it will just make it so much easier on maps where you need the vision uh you've got increased accuracy uh, of 10 percent using steady aim snapshot uh running gun and track mechanic now obviously have some additional ones I haven't picked my last one because I know that they're bringing in a couple more things but something like camo expertise or something that increases your um, camo would be nice on the tank uh, you could have something like clutch braking because obviously it's a British tank they're not the fastest at turning um, so yeah something like that could potentially be worth it now onto the actual stats of the tank we have uh, its engine, a thousand and forty horsepower uh, of this tank engine, 
uh, 53 kilometers forward, really mobile. Uh, it's a very all-rounder tank, this one. 20 kilometers backwards, yeah, perfect for mobility of a medium tank. Could be faster, potentially, but this one's, uh, you know, reliable. And you're going to be able to shift around the battlefield as and when you feel like it. Gun, yeah, perfect. 0.23 accuracy using the perks. Uh, 8.61 rate of fire, um, which is really nice. Damage at 390, it's not 420 as you can see on there. That's because of the. it takes an average of all of the rounds that you have in the tank. Obviously the Hesh rounds do more damage. Um, and the penetration, yeah, that's that's a lie because it also takes into account the um, Hesh rounds uh, and does an average. The rotation is 50 degrees a second, so it's going to take you a solid 7 seconds Um in order to fully rotate your tank 360 degrees just over uh, not not really that good to be honest yeah, it's, it's pretty terrible um, your view range yeah really good um, rotation speed of the turret mm, it's alright uh, but when you combine it with the uh, rotation speed uh, of your hull you can get up to 98 um, degrees a second so if anything uh, gets around you as long as you're not tracked uh, which is why I take track mechanic because the tracks on this tank are huge um, yeah that's something you definitely need uh, so that you can keep up with anything should they wish to get around you or, and try and take you out that way uh, signal range we don't really need to talk about that because it's pretty pointless in this game it just shows you where people are on the map uh, the ammo yeah, we've gone over that, and there we go. Um, that's all of the stats we've got in Garage uh, for the Action X, and I think we'll just hop over into some gameplay. I've got two for you, two Ace Tankers, uh, really good games, so I'll hop over. So the first bit of gameplay we've got here is on Arctic Region. Uh, it's a Tier 9 and 10 matchup. Uh, we have got some Tier 8s in there, I believe, but not very many. Uh, um, basically this was a really really nice quick game where we managed to deal a lot of damage uh, and get a, a bit of assistance as well at the same time uh, now on Arctic region uh, on the standard battle variant like this that has recently come into the game where they've kind of changed the spawns around not particularly a fan of this because I think um, that standard battles should just have uh, the same spawns no matter what but to get players used to it I don't think that they should have multiple various different forms of standard battle I mean I get it with encounter and stuff where you've got various different uh, game modes but with things like this I just don't think it's necessary uh, to change to change your spawns and I think it has led to a bit of imbalance in the past I don't know if my opinion on this this one is necessarily that unbalanced but for sure it does cause some problems for, for most players when they think uh, that they're in a matchup that they've not used to. Uh, especially when they get to these top tiers and I, I don't like that they bring them in um, into the top tier straight away. Now obviously these guys have moved into the middle of the map where it's pretty much just a killing field. If you cross you should do it right at the back where you can see on the mini map that light tank is and then make your way across. Don't go through this um, middle bit where you're going to be able to get spotted uh, easily because the people that are sniping like I am at the start of this game uh, are going to be able to shoot you. Now we've racked up 2k damage already at the start of this game which is, which is perfect. Uh, I like to deal quite a bit of damage at the beginning and as you can see we're not we're not hesitating to fire uh, even if we can't actually get a shot clearly um, it you know it just increases the chances because he was pulling back anyway that WZ there uh, so shooting uh, is gonna basically increase the chances of getting damage if you don't shoot you're not gonna get any so that's that's my thing with these tanks so long as you've not got another target that you could hit within those next couple of seconds if it's the only tank you can see you might as well fire so we're moving down into the center of the map, uh, which is something I've found in this kind of tank. You have to move and adapt with the game uh, in order to actually pick up the highest amounts of damage that you can. So the enemy team has moved, well, the majority of their team's gone round the mountain, uh, the mountain side on the right hand side of the map. And we've moved down because I knew that they, that's what they were doing. It was quite likely because obviously not a lot of their team had been spotted over to the right of me at the bottom. 
Uh, so I guess that they'd be moving up that way. Now we've got a lot of side shots here, racking up 3k damage already, which is perfect. We like uh, being able to just keep our gun firing continuously. We move up a little bit more just to try and get some more side shots on these tanks. And that's what you've got to do in these in these British mediums, is just keep that gun firing. You'll learn that from uh, the tank line before, like the Comet and, and the lower tier, like the Centurions. If you want to have good games, you need to put yourself in positions where you're going to be able to shoot tanks and that's what this central position here is like the fact i'm able to use this though uh, it should be noted um, that because their team haven't pushed me from the right hand side where those tds are near their cap circle that's why i'm able to utilize this position and i wouldn't recommend necessarily going straight down and sitting in the middle like i am now because if any of them decide uh, to actually just poke around to my right uh, across that little uh, bridge of water they're going to be able to get me we get quite lucky with the shot on the 257 there as we as we were pulling back i wasn't expecting but that's what but that's what you've got to do with these is um if you if you think you can get a shot off you might as well uh, especially if they're going to pull back so that's definitely something to keep in mind like i mentioned before we try and track this e100 unfortunate because we were trying to perma track him there but the e75 gets in our way which makes it which is annoying but you know some people need to get damage as well we can't be too greedy so long as he's hitting them that's absolutely fine with me um, we see that the super conqueror is up here we're aiming for the back of his turret where it's weakest and that there's not that guard uh, we get spotted by the e1 uh, the wz in the middle we're wary of the td that's behind us and this game's quite close at the minute it could go either way depending on how we deal with this next couple of steps uh, obviously we've got tanks behind we're in a bit of a pincer maneuver here um, and we're just going to try and get out of it as easily as possible there we go we poke that we pull back straight away and it baits a shot from one of their team uh, we see the u100s moving up put a shot there lucky auto aimed i wouldn't recommend auto aiming all the time but uh, we wanted to try and bait one as he as he was crossing and try and punish him there we go just that's a key feature you need to keep that gun firing no matter whether you think you're gonna pen or not so long as it's not a, a stupid uh, auto aim if if you can aim it's better but if you can't aim and you don't have anything else to shoot then definitely do that uh, we move up here because we're trying to push the advantage because I know that we have to take some form of um, movement the wz on that side hits me we're expecting to get hit at least once here um which is all right for me i'm just trying to make sure that we can manage to get some more damage concept 1b hits my gun breaks it but doesn't deal any damage luckily and this is the thing you need to really push push that advantage in your medium tanks i've got the health advantage i've got the dpm to finish off both these tanks uh, in a short space of time the conqueror there on one shot as well and he's he's noted us but the uh concept 1b didn't so there you go we've picked up 7k nearly uh, at the start <laughs> within you know a matter of minutes it's it's been so quick and that's what you can do after this update is get the, your dpm up significantly uh, from what it was and also the accuracy means that you can really hit your shots if you know what you're doing uh, a bit of a lucky shot there we didn't fully fully aim uh, but I wanted to get as much damage because I thought, you know, our heavy tanks might be able to get a shot in there and they'd basically get the damage at the end of the game. So there we go. 7.378 thousand uh, damage there at the end of the game. Uh, within six minutes, I think it was. Um, we got six kills, giving us a top gun and 1695 base XP. Uh, really really good game uh, for me uh, definitely a quick one and it really helped with my marks of excellence that I was going for as you can see 6 kills 7378 damage uh, and 1989 assisted so you know a nice 9k damage combined game right there we made 83,000 silver which is unusual for uh, a standard tank we got the ace tanker top gun fire for effect spotter uh, and uh, the high caliber as well as increasing my marks of excellence which is what I was trying to do here within this little run of uh, games so that was perfect we'll move on to the next replay for you guys uh, and talk about that one
So our next game here is on Malinovka Winter. Uh, this is a map that I quite enjoy playing on. Uh, it definitely has the ability to have some really good games on. And especially in the Centurion where you've got that mobility to move around the map should you need to. And the DPM to put your shots out when, as and when you get the opportunity to. Because this map is one where you don't necessarily get that many opportunities to shoot at tanks where they're not going to be able to shoot at you. Um, one such opportunity is uh, right here, light tank moving up. We managed to pop uh, a shot in there using uh, a decent amount of lead and just the ability to also put another shot in there, uh, as you can see, managing to track that guy. Um, and that's something you don't want to be doing is uh, using your light tank uh, and just wasting their health at the start of a game like that. Uh, Batch at 12 T is doing. I really enjoyed the Batch at 12 T. That was a that was a brilliant tank, uh, and definitely trying to YOLO in at the start of the game is something you don't want to do. Now because that Batch at was spotting us, uh, we were getting shot and we couldn't actually spot whatever was shooting us, uh, and whatever did uh, managed to kill our uh, our commander I think, uh, which is really unfortunate, um, as we managed to pop a shot into those uh, tanks that are moving up don't know what this stockade is doing uh, out in the open in the middle of the field on Malinovka, but we'll take advantage of it, putting some shots into him uh, and using our DPM, reloading every six seconds and just trying to get as much damage as possible early on. And since we did take that hit, uh, leaving us on, us on a lot less damage than usual, we tried getting that guy there blind, managed to not actually be able to pen or we just missed him because he'd moved, um, but that's something you need to also do is aim for tanks even when they go undetected because 9 times out of 10 they, they're around there and you, you might be able to get another amount of damage. As you can see I'm doing right here, uh, we know that he was tracked so we're just firing um, continuously. He's, uh, he's moved now I believe, but you know, it's always worth it. I can see that this um, stockade's there. That was a bit of a poor aim there, uh, which is annoying. But, uh, you know, we've got to try and shoot sometimes. And uh, hopefully we can actually manage to hit him. So in games like this, where it's a bit stale, um, it's just trying to really make uh, yourself actually in a position for when tanks do actually come out and and come outside on like that stockade um, is doing is just being able to shoot them we realize that the enemy team have taken the bottom left over there uh, really heavily and because we don't want to get taken out um, by just a swarm of tanks we're, we're gonna move over to this side doesn't seem like there's too many over here and um, so we're we're just gonna move over here to avoid getting shot in the back um, we know that there's probably a few over here. We know that there's probably quite a few over to the left of me, uh, up by that rock where that um, medium tank is, and also on the hill. Uh, this is a game where I thought I was going to lose just because we'd lost a lot of map control. Even though they do have to push through an open field, uh, we tend to get pincered on this map if you don't control the hill very well, and I wasn't entirely sure if that was uh, going to happen or not. Artillery has a go at us, uh, obviously, because you do have that weak armour. I've been one shot a few times in this by artillery in the last couple of days. Really, really annoying, especially when you're trying to push for marks of excellence. And just that RNG mechanic just comes in and uh, ruins your game. And, you know, you go down by 2% in one game, uh, which takes you, you know, 5 or 6 or 7 games to get back. Uh, really annoying. And it's just one of those things that... I really hate in the game. We spot the Conqueror over there, the Super Conqueror that is, put a shot into him. We tried to track him and damage him. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. He comes out again. We track and pen him there. Uh, really easy to do with the Conquerors and Super Conquerors. Just aim at that inner drive wheel, and nine times out of ten, you'll, you'll track and pen. He uses his repair kit there. Um, no way that his uh, repair crew skill is uh, that good. And um, yeah, we're going to use this bush here now 
to shoot anyone that's crossing into our base if we can actually manage to see them. And also it gives us the opportunity to, if we are defending, move back over to our side of the map um, to be able to defend from there uh, using the gun depression that this tank gets. So the Super Conqueror coming out, really broken tank that is, um, definitely a really strong one in the current current game, got really good accuracy and unfortunate for him, his repair speed does not outmatch our DPM and we're just perma tracking him there where he can't see us, there's no way for him to see us and there we go, we're just constantly, constantly damaging and, um, uh, and tracking him at the same time. And there we go, he's out of the game. Uh, not very fun for him, I can admit, but that's what you got to do when you're in these sorts of games. Use those uh, benefits of your tank uh, in order to actually uh, take out the tanks. I know that this 57 Heavy is out, out in the open and I could be going for damage, but I'm just going for that tracking shot um, as we move to actually shoot the tank there. Um, but the thing with the 57 Heavy is it's terrible on its reload because it has no damage. Uh, to deal back to you, um, so I'm conscious, you know, we can take the shots from the 57 Heavy uh, if he low rolls, um, but we, we're we conscious that if he does reload with that like 20 seconds of reload time that it does get, um, he can definitely kill us, uh, but that is not the case for him. Caught out in the middle of an open field in a heavy tank with very little armour uh, on the whole, it's not going to go well for him, is it? Uh, light tanker up here, the T100LT, I believe, um, being pesky against our, our TDs and our heavy or medium tank. Um, they're going for the cap. We've loaded a high explosive um, round there just to, just to try and uh, counter out the cap. Uh, it's a Sheridan, uh, even sorry, I said that it was a T100LT, that's not the case. Um, and he's being... <laughs> A right little pain for our, t our team there. I do believe that he's got the um, the derp gun on that actually um, <laughs> which is not very nice for him uh, because it's going to be a struggle for him to pen unless he gets the back of us um, although now I think he does actually have the standard gun um, so yeah he's coming he's coming back around and because we're not uh, terrible aiming, he's not able to do very much against us um, and we're going to try and push him now um, we don't auto aim there, we actually aim our, our tank and we're reloading, I think we might have already won the game there, yeah by cap unfortunately uh, I hate winning by cap uh, especially when there's more damage left in the game could have got a, a couple more hits in there uh, before we won but as you can see, 4 kills, 6,347 damage, and 2k assist. Uh, a mastery badge, high caliber, um, 1,649 base XP, 2,205 spotting damage, and a really good game there again. So that about wraps up the review for the Centurion Action X, one of the two British tier 10 medium tanks that came into the game a long, long time ago. And basically the FV4202, the other one, got removed and this became uh, introduced into the game. It was really good actually, um, and it is still really good, even with power creep, the DPM's excellent, etc. You've got the versatility and the mobility to be able to move around and use your tank in a variety of different ways, use your armor sometimes, potentially, if you're using a ridge line and quickly sniping tank, people don't get to aim at your capolas and the very top bit of the tank where it's slightly weaker. And that's something you need to you need to take advantage of when you use tanks like this is just basically all aspects holistically of the tank that you can uh, to ensure that you have the best games, use the spotting, uh, take control of your damage, make sure that you're aiming for the tracks and, and damaging shots at the same time, using those drive wheels, uh, catching tanks off guard, uh, pushing when you need to. Um, some of the things that I hope I demonstrated in the gameplays that I showed uh, in this video. And I really hope that you've learned a thing or two about the tank and, and what sort of playstyle it will have uh, for you when you're using it. If you guys found it somewhat informative 
Uh, or you liked it, please hit that like button, subscribe to see more gameplay and reviews and stuff like that, as well as some updates and news videos that you guys are, are well accustomed to by now. Um, anything else uh, you fancy recommending me, then I will take a look at it and potentially do videos on that sort of thing. I've got a few ideas. Uh, I've three marked this tank recently. Uh, I've three marked the T57 Heavy, so I'll probably do a little review of that as well at the same time. Got quite a few good gameplays in the 57 Heavy for you guys to have a look at. Uh, a few 7k damage pluses. Um, so yeah, I really hope you guys have found the video good. And uh, if you've got any criticisms, please leave them in the description so I can try and improve for the next video. If you want to see certain things that I might not have shown in this gameplay, then definitely, um, definitely let me know. Other than that, I hope you guys have had a really good day. And I hope you guys continue to have a good day. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.